Hello, my name is Oscar Bergman. I'm a life science analyst here at RedEye. And today we are joined by Eras for a full hour of their uh, strategy update presentation. This hour is divided into two parts. Uh, first, the company's presentation for about 40 minutes, followed by a Q&A session held by me. And after this uh, live event, uh, this will be uploaded to the RedEye webpage. So I leave it to Eras and its CEO, uh, Cliente Santopoulos and its CCO, uh, Will Martin. Welcome. Thank you, Oscar. We are delighted to participate. And um, <clears throat> I would um, like to um, share with you our recent progress in the background of the pandemic. Uh, besides that, we uh, continue to be very excited about the significant progress that we want to outline today. So as I'm going to be making um, some forward-looking statements, I want to bring that to your attention. And most of you naturally know that uh, we are a Swedish American medical technology company with a very comprehensive portfolio of innovative products in neurocritical care. Uh, <clears throat> the company's headquarters are in, in Stockholm where legal um, finance, IR and IT are located. But we also have on um, two additional places in, in Europe, uh, presence in Holland where our head of international sales is coordinating our efforts and then a strong team in, in Germany uh, for our uh, direct sales uh, presence in the European Union and, and, and some other countries outside of the EU. In the United States, out of San Diego, California, we have the executive team with direct sales coordination and, of course, R&D and operations. And naturally, um, you again, uh, most of you know that we are publicly traded on NASDAQ Stockholm. What I like to do is share with you today <clears throat> and emphasize again our vision and strategy and it's essentially simple we want and aspire to become a global leader in neurocritical care and we want to do this because we know we have innovative um, solutions uh, for both traumatic brain injury and intracranial bleeding that improve outcomes drive uh, revenue based on our um, airflow and hummingbird product and generate a differentiated clinical data set to support these claims. In the 40 minutes or so that Will and I will be discussing our progress, I hope uh, that we can convince you we made progress on all of these, and we're now in a position to really uh, look uh, into acceleration of our commercial growth. Our <clears throat> next slide basically outlines the market opportunity. In between intracranial bleeding and traumatic brain injury, <clears throat> we have uh, an opportunity of that is uh, bigger than 1.5 billion, both in the EU and the US. Uh, the vast majority of that is, of course, intracranial bleeding, and this is where Iraflow is addressing uh, that part of the market. About 400 million uh, is the traumatic brain injury market, and this is only for the EU and the US. Uh, collectively and globally, we think the market is over 2 billion. Um, dollars. The important thing is that it's also growing at an average of, of um, um, in excess of six to uh, six percent a year. So large market, unmet medical need, and a growing uh, market opportunity. The opportunity that we see in terms of our of our products is that there is very little innovation that has happened in the space. Um, and in fact, and in quoting uh, Dr. Matteo Riva, it is astonishing to observe that the only treatments currently available for intracranial bleeding um, critical care uh, were developed in the 80s. And so what we are doing, of course, is introducing two fundamentally um, <clears throat> different product lines that uh, have that innovative nature. And I want to explain and take the time to highlight what are the shortcomings of the current um, extraventricular drainage and intracranial uh, monitoring system and what it is that we're doing. So what you see on the left, that's he, how today the standard of care is. The, the current intracranial pressure monitoring um, is essentially um, a device that you see here to the left. Um, and there is a catheter that has been connected to the brain. Um, we know that there is more than 38% chance that this catheter needs to be changed because of occlusion. And then there is a, typically a second probe uh, to monitor the intracranial pressure. 
Um, and you see to the right all the shortcomings. Uh, the occlusion is, is a very significant uh, effect. Um, there's an infection rate um, that varies um, from institution to institution, but averages at about 11% uh, in, um, yeah, across the different institutions. And of course, when that happens, you have an, an increase in cost um, of the stay, which uh, in dollars is translated to over $84,000. So those are the um, major shortcomings that you're seeing because the traditional treatment is a analog passive and manually intensive approach. So on the next slide, you'll see what it is that we are introducing. On the left, you see the intra era flow product line, uh, which is addressing, of course, the major part of the market, the 1.2 billion um, market that I was describing. Um, and this is the world's first irrigating intracranial drainage system. We irrigate, we drain, we concurrently monitor the intracranial uh, pressure, all of it in one digital system. And to the right, you see the product line in Hummingbird that is addressing traumatic brain injury when advanced neuromonitoring is, um, is the key here for better outcomes. And we base that on more, most accurate, very simple to use, zero drift. In other words, the measurements over a period of day after day after day continue to be accurate as opposed to what the competition needs to do, which is typically readjusting uh, the reference point on a daily basis. And of course, last but not least, we provide multi-modular monitoring. In other words, in the same device, we're able to have multiple probes that inform the neurosurgeon in the best possible way. Uh, and those are unique aspects, innovative aspects of what we're putting in the table. And this is why we uh, believe that we can become the standard of care. And that's our um, aspirations as a young innovative company essentially disrupting the way neurocritical care is practiced. With um, the next slide, I like to turn it over to Will, who's going to take us over some of the details of Iraflow, Hummingbird, and importantly, as you will see from uh, the efforts that we've made, having minimized now the regulatory, the clinical, the engineering, and the manufacturing risk, our focus is now essentially laser pointed towards commercial execution. And our chief commercial officer and president, Will Martin, will take you over the next several slides to give you a sense of the progress will be made on both in US and in and the EU and several countries outside of, of the two territories. Will? Thank you, Cleanthus. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as Cleantos referenced uh, over the, the next handful of minutes, I will do a, a quick introduction, quick background on both of our products, Aeroflow and Hummingbird, uh, that are designed to take advantage of that significant market opportunity. And then we'll provide that detailed um, commercial update, uh, commercial strategy summary um, for, for everybody to, to better understand the progress that we're, we are making. Uh, with Aeroflow, as Cleantos referenced, it's the world's first irrigating intracranial drainage system. Instead of using that manual passive approach to drainage that has been the traditional gold standard over the past several decades, Aeroflow adds integrated intracranial pressure monitoring and automated irrigation to the drainage. Uh, the pressure monitoring allows the treatment to be tailored to each individual patient's condition and the irrigation helps to do two things. One, using the dual lumen Aeroflow catheter, the irrigation helps to keep drainage holes free from blockage formation that you saw can happen up to almost half of the time. Um, that freedom from occlusion ensures that drainage can be continuous. You can remove excess fluid and toxic materials from the brain, and the irrigation also helps to dilute that uh, toxic material, making it easier to drain. Um, Moving on from the animation, you'll get a better sense of that mechanism of action here on this slide. Uh, the orange catheter that you see on the left is a traditional external ventricular drain uh, with passive drainage. Within a handful of minutes, solid particulate starts to collect within the drainage holes, blocking them and preventing needed drainage from occurring. With the Aeroflow white catheter, you can see the automated bolus irrigation that helps to keep those drainage holes free from blockages forming. 
In addition, you can see the change in the background color. That's the dilution of the collected surrounding material due to the irrigation. And you can see that in another benchtop test on the right where the red collected material over a period of time has been diluted and thoroughly drained due to Iroflow's combination of irrigation and drainage. In a real world setting, we have also seen this mechanism of action translate into clinically significant versatile patient outcomes in a variety of intracranial pathologies. Um, at a variety of hospitals, both in the US as well as Europe, um, Iroflow has proven itself to be effective in the treatment of chronic subdural hematomas, which is a collection of blood between the brain and the skull. Uh, that irrigation allows for um, more of the collected blood to be removed while also allowing the brain to slowly and safely re-expand back to its normal shape. Uh, in the middle, uh, you can see a, a significant bilateral intraventricular hemorrhage. This is a, one of the most severe types of intracranial bleeding where a ruptured aneurysm has resulted in collections of blood within the reservoir of cerebrospinal fluid in the middle of the brain uh, with Iroflow's combination of irrigation and drainage, that blood can be more effectively, more thoroughly removed. Uh, and then also even in aggressive brain infections, uh, ventriculitis. Uh, this was a patient that was treated in the Nordic area uh, in Helsinki, Finland. Um, aggressive colonies of bacteria were forming uh, after spreading from other parts of the body within the ventricles of the brain. And with Iroflow's combination of irrigation and drainage, that material is able to be diluted and washed out in a period of time. Uh, that is something that has significant morbidity and mortality, um, often north of 80%. And, and this patient was able to leave the hospital and return to normal life. Uh, the, the case in the middle uh, has, uh, uh, has been published in the, the Curious Journal of Medical Science. Uh, the ventriculitis case uh, has been submitted to operative neurosurgery for publication. Examples of our case experience continuing to expand uh, the foundation uh, of clinical evidence supporting the use of Iroflow. And that foundation continues to grow as we expand commercially. At this point, um, we have Iroflow systems placed on three continents, 18 countries, uh, working with 30 plus uh, leading institutions um, around the world now have treated more than 200 patients successfully with Iroflow, validating its mechanism of action, uh, validating its impact on an extremely ill subset of patients. And in those 200 plus patient treatments, um, the overall mechanism of action of Iroflow has been confirmed. Um, we've seen zero major complications, zero infections due to the consistent washing of the tip of the catheter. Uh, bacteria is unable to organize and collect within the, uh, within the brain, within the surrounding tissue. Um, and when our system's irrigation has been actively employed, over 200 patients with a 0% uh, catheter occlusion rate, uh, validating that mechanism of action, which compares extremely favorably to the literature that documents um, competitive uh, drainage systems having occlusion rates um, of uh, up to 47%. In addition to Iroflow, we are now um, accelerating and broadening our, the commercial release of our Hummingbird uh, intracranial pressure monitoring system. Uh, the system is uh, cleared for use in the United States and we are actively working with our notified body to, ex uh, to make it available uh, under CE mark in Europe. Uh, as Cleanthus referenced, uh, the Hummingbird uh, product family is a um, collection of tools to help to diagnose the extent of um, intracranial pressure elevation. From the Hummingbird Solo, which is a single lumen uh, probe uh, to, to monitor ICP, to the Hummingbird Quad, which is a multi-lumen uh, bolt that allows multiple parameters to be uh, monitored through one access site and not needing multiple um, holes to, to be drilled in a patient's skull. Uh, both of these connect 
to the Hummingbird control module, uh, which serves as a, a small piece of pass-through equipment without the need for large capital equipment, uh, as well as the Aeris cranial access kit that, has, um, that, that allows um, any of these procedures to take place in the neurosurgery unit. Hummingbird is unique compared to other uh, commercially available systems because of its mechanism of action. Hummingbird uses a small air bladder on the distal tip of the probe that's filled with a small amount of air, approximately 10 microliters, and that air bladder is inserted within the brain tissue, the parenchyma, and the brain tissue exerts pressure onto that air bladder. The pressure that's exerted by the tissue is then transformed, uh, translated into an intracranial pressure reading and an associated waveform. Uh, the system is constantly looking to um, ensure that the appropriate amount of air was in, was, is located within that bladder. Uh, and so as a result of that, uh, it automatically recalibrates itself every hour, ensuring the most accurate ICP reading. That constant recalibration every hour allows Hummingbird to be uh, the most commercially, the most accurate commercially available intracranial pressure monitoring system. If you look at the instructions for use of Hummingbird compared to the market leaders, uh, Seralink, which is sold by Integra, and Camino, which is sold by Natus, um, there is a significant difference in long-term accuracy of the pressure reading. Hummingbird recalibrates its reading every hour. So the phenomenon of drift, which is air um, stacking up uh, over a period of time, does not occur. With other systems, once they are placed in the brain, they cannot be re-zeroed or recalibrated. So over a period of time, the inaccuracy of the readings begin to stack up as the air mounts. So on the fifth, seventh, 10th day of monitoring, uh, the reading from the machine may not be the most accurate. Um, according to the IFUs, the accuracy of Hummingbird um, is approximately six times more accurate than the Seralink system, and over a period of time can be up to 40 times more accurate uh, than the Camino system. Uh, and this, is, this message, this accuracy uh, is resonating favorably with our customers. At the same time, the ease of use of the Hummingbird system is also resonating with our customers. Uh, for the Camino system, it's an extremely user intensive, uh, challenging system for nurses to manage. Uh, many training videos, uh, many minutes of content to become an expert on the uh, Camino system. Whereas with Hummingbird, we are looking at three steps. What you see in the video here um, truly is all of the setup that is required for, with, with, for the Hummingbird system. We zero the system on the patient's monitor in their ICU room, connect the catheter, and then press a button to prime the system. Those three steps in just a matter of seconds uh, is what is required to set up the Hummingbird system. So that combination of accuracy and ease of use is something that uh, we, we are building upon as we roll the system out in a, in a more broad fashion. So after discussing the features, benefits, and advantages of the Iraflow and Hummingbird systems, I want to spend the rest of my time uh, really digging into the overall strategy that we have in place to build a leadership position in the world of neurocritical care. First and foremost, accelerating that commercial product adoption, confirming to the marketplace that our products are being favorably received and that favorable reception is now being translated into meaningful revenue growth. That is obviously at the top of our list of cr critical strategic elements. Beyond that, we're continuing from a regulatory standpoint, expand the global footprint, both in size of our sales force and the number of markets and the number of products that each um, that they were able to sell in each market. Constantly looking to exceed customer expectations by innovating and approving our products, making sure that we have a steady stream of new product launches um, to continue to uh, exceed those customer expectations. And finally, taking all of this information, translating it into clinical data that confirms in particular, particular the superiority of Iraflow over 
uh, traditional treatments. So over the next uh, 20 minutes or so, we'll discuss each of these in more detail. And, and I will start uh, by going into more detail on the commercial product adoption. What are the keys for us to confirm uh, and build a legacy brand uh, that shows that both Iroflow and Hummingbird are maximizing their impact on the marketplace? First of all, building and growing the footprint where our equipment is placed which can then allow us to drive disposable revenue. The more systems we have in the market, the more markets that we are uh, active in, that gives us more opportunities to drive revenue. At the same time, we have a new technology. There's a training curve, a learning curve uh, that for nurses and physicians, we wanna continue to use best practices and world-class tools to shorten that path to product adoption. I think we're taking significant steps in that direction and we're constantly looking for ways to improve that. As we shorten that path, that will allow us to transition evaluations into long-term revenue generating um, commercial centers. Most of our early focus has been on Iroflow. We wanna make sure that we now can expand that and start driving revenue from a broader number of customers with the Hummingbird brand. Uh, and at the same time, we're a small company that is growing. We want to make sure that our customers who are excited about the technology help us spread that message, drive awareness, really lean on peer-to-peer -peer influence and peer-to-peer -peer interaction within the neurosurgery community to help us drive product adoption. So let's talk about each of these in a little more detail in coming slides. To review, let, let's start with the overall um, razor razor blade model of both of our products. Both Iroflow and Hummingbird have a small piece of capital equipment. Our model that is currently built shows approximately 10 to 15 percent of our overall revenue being driven by capital equipment long term. Um, most of the revenue uh, is driven by the razor blades in that model, uh, which are the various disposables. With Iroflow, both the catheter and the digital pump tube set are disposable and are used on single patients only. The probes uh, that are inserted into the brain of the humming with the Hummingbird system, both the single and the quad lumen Hummingbird probe are disposable as well. That in the long term will drive most of our revenue as customers become trained on the system and start to um, utilize our products on a day-to-day -day basis. And then a, a small portion of our revenue, um, not in, in, inconsequential, but approximately five to 10% long-term um, should be driven by service contracts. Uh, we started to generate a small amount of revenue at our first couple of um, customers, um, and, and that will continue to grow moving forward. So looking at that model, the most important first step is to maximize the capital equipment footprint. Um, we've discussed on, on recent earnings calls uh, this slide here, where you can see from the third quarter to the fourth quarter of 2020, a significant step forward in the number of Iroflow systems that have been installed globally. Growth in evaluation systems in the United States, as well as growth in the number of systems that have been placed in distribution model, or excuse me, distribution markets around the world has allowed us to take a significant step forward in that global install base. Um, new markets coming on board from a distribution standpoint, including Switzerland, Jordan, Southeastern Europe, um, Italy, other markets uh, throughout Europe, as well as the first systems being shipped, both Iroflow and Hummingbird um, internationally, Iroflow to Latin America, uh, and our first Hummingbird systems internationally uh, during the first quarter, all are helping us expand that global install base. Um, the key now moving forward is making sure that we translate that growth in systems out there in the marketplace into more consistent commercial usage. So let's review the process that our sales team and our distribution partners must navigate through in order to uh, ensure that long-term commercial usage. Um, we, we typically see um, a, a sales process for a new technology that can take up to approximately nine months from targeting and finding the right physicians, 
Two, um, navigating through the hospital's approval process, evaluating the system for the first time, and then closing that sale uh, and turning into a commercial customer. Talking about each of these in general from a strategy standpoint. We now have started post COVID investing again in the growth of our commercial sales and education team. In Europe, five direct sales heads and two trainers. In the US, seven direct sales heads and now four nurse education trainers are allowing us to engage more customers, train more customers and bring them up to speed faster. Even in spite of COVID, we continue to have engagement with key hospitals in each of our markets. And while training, access and patient treatments um, at these new hospitals have been delayed at various points due to COVID over the past year. Uh, we are starting uh, to again see acceleration in the number of new evaluations and the number of patient treatments um, in spite of um, COVID still impacting the world around us. The most important and most challenging part of the overall process is the middle part where with a new technology, we are pushing and wanting to show customers just how impactful um, the Iraflow system in particular can be. Um, with COVID, we're seeing delays in initial approval for evaluations and after evaluations when making the final buying decision. Oftentimes there can be 30 to 90 days on both sides of that evaluation while the hospital does their analysis due to the stress that hospital budgets have been under. Uh, that's seeing, that's a, causing us to see a slightly longer timeline, but we're putting now more hospitals into that sales funnel. From a logistics standpoint, Iris typically uh, provides the capital equipment during an evaluation at no charge. It's important for us to uh, allow customers to see firsthand the impact that the system can have. Disposables, um, long-term, we expect in the US to sell the, the Iraflow disposables for up to $4,000. In a market development phase during the valuation, um, we often have to negotiate and provide discounted pricing um, to uh, the, the hospitals to prove to them that the system has the desired impact. Um, and that will then allow us to get in, train and navigate our way through anywhere from a three patient, typically to a 10 patient evaluation uh, for each respective hospital. And then finally, after the completion of the evaluation, we're seeing and continue to see strong enthusiasm from our customer base. Uh, thus far, uh, greater than 85% of the customers that have completed their evaluations have chosen to stock Iraflow long-term commercially. Now, there are a number of customers uh, that are still in that evaluation phase, uh, but of those that have completed, um, the acceptance rate of the technology has been greater than even our earlier estimates. The key now is moving more of the customers out of the evaluation phase into that commercial phase. Uh, the other thing that we are seeing or have seen uh, is that due to these budget concerns, more customers um, are moving from purchasing capital equipment into a disposable usage agreement. Uh, both new customers in the U.S. Um, during Q1 have signed these types of placement agreements. That's in exchange uh, for the capital equipment at no charge. The customer will place a larger upfront order of disposables and will commit to a certain number of disposable usage uh, each quarter moving forward while Iris retains ownership of that capital. Uh, after that commercial order, we then deploy our team into the account and start more broadly training them, moving from typically one or two physicians that support the evaluation into a broader overall training uh, routine that over a period of quarters will allow us to increase disposable usage within the hospital. That there is our path towards increasing commercial adoption. And we're starting to see that as we transition evaluations into revenue generating commercial centers. Uh, in the US it, during the fourth quarter of 2020, we had 30 systems that were placed for evaluation and nine of those had been transitioned into commercial systems in the US. Just with the transition of two customers, uh, very significant comprehensive stroke centers, Buffalo General and West Virginia University, during the first quarter of this year, we've seen a significant shift where 
uh, our commercial footprint with Iraflow now has more than doubled in the United States. We transitioned six units that were being evaluated at Buffalo and four at West Virginia into commercial revenue generating units with these placement agreements. And so now you see a, a much more equitable split between evaluation systems and commercial systems in the US just with transition of one or two key customers. And at the same time, even though our European launch and ability to train our distribution partners has been impacted because of COVID travel restrictions, significant markets, uh, significant customers in key markets are initiating evaluations with Iraflow, including Queen Square in London, the National Neurosurgery Hospital in the United Kingdom, Karolinska, our house University in Denmark, uh, others throughout Germany, Holland, and Portugal. Uh, we are virtually supporting our partners and new customers as they complete training and start to look for patients to treat with Iraflow. All showing key signs of adoption of interest and the ability to translate into revenue generating uh, commercial centers. The next element in our commercial strategy is long term. We want to go from a company that is driving most of its revenue with Iraflow to one that is more equitably split between Iraflow and Hummingbird. We've announced the signing in the third quarter of 2020, a contract with Premier, uh, the second largest hospital network in the US. We're starting to see the fruits of that contract as uh, multiple Premier hospitals are now initiating uh, evaluations. Uh, with the Hummingbird system. In fact, yesterday we initiated uh, patient treatment at a key uh, leading hospital in Texas with Hummingbird that we will announce more commercial details as they move through their evaluation. Uh, we've previously discussed the fact that the Hummingbird CE mark is currently under review and we expect uh, to have that in place sometime during 2021 to increase the international revenue contribution from Hummingbird. And I can also announce that during the first quarter of this year, we have shipped to non-CE mark uh, country, the first Hummingbird international shipment. And we'll start to add um, international revenue contribution from the Hummingbird system uh, moving forward. And the last element of this commercial strategy is in, in many ways, the key to driving broader awareness and adoption. And that is the engagement of our key customers. Uh, we've, we've seen success with this from um, positions such as Dr. Adnan Siddiqui, uh, one of the, the um, most preeminent neurosurgeons um, from the United States who practices at Buffalo General. Through his heavily followed social media feeds, he's made his peers aware of their early experience with Iraflow. Uh, just these types of posts have already, uh, through former residents and colleagues uh, at Buffalo, um, generated additional new leads that our team has followed up on. Uh, and we will continue to do that uh, with key physicians in markets just to make sure that their success with the product is documented within a small, tight-knit neurosurgical community. The other piece of this is that uh, our customers are excited about the technology. Um, I will um, show you here a, a short video that was produced by the University of California, Irvine about one of their key patients, about one of their um, uh, patients who was treated with a chronic subdural hematoma early during the pandemic uh, to, to share how they are embracing and adopting cutting edge technology with Iraflow. Last year, I lost my balance and I hit my head. I was very concerned if he didn't get help that he could have. We needed to go to the emergency room. Chronic subdural hematomas are blood clots that accumulate under the covering of the brain on top of the surface of the brain. The traditional approach to chronic subdurals has been fraught with lots of issues. The Iraflow catheter has really provided us with a giant leap forward in terms of improving patient care. It actively irrigates fluid into that space, allowing us to then get any residual blood clot that starts to form. After the surgery, it was an almost immediate change. He's just done very well, and it was a great outcome with using the Iraflow device. UCI Health is committed to providing world-class care, pioneering new technology, and improving the quality of life for the patients that we treat. And Iraflow fits very well in that mission. UCI has exceeded expectations. It's just almost like a miracle. Life is definitely good. Yeah.
We are very pleased uh, that the uh, University of California, Irvine wanted to share Dr. Mitchell and his family's story. Uh, that's a snippet of a longer video that you can find on ERA's social media. Uh, we'll make sure that that's posted again in coming days uh, to, to learn the, th the full story of Dr. Mitchell and his experience. Uh, but it's one thing when our team is selling the story, when telling the impact that Iraflow and, and Hummingbird can have on patients. It's something completely different when our customers are telling the story. That's showing adoption, that's showing belief, and, and that's a key element of our long-term commercial strategy. Uh, we're starting to see it um, come to fruition, coming out of COVID in the third and fourth quarter of 2020. We resume revenue growth. Um, as we move through the first half of this year, because of these leading indicators, um, we expect to continue to report uh, sales acceleration. We're excited for uh, the investor community uh, to start to see um, the, the fruits of a lot of this foundation that's been built. Uh, because what we're doing now is growing that commercial footprint to increase revenue opportunities. More sales reps, more distribution partners, more products available in each market, that creates more opportunity for more revenue. Uh, in coming quarters, we will start to shift from adding distributors to training and making those distributors self-sufficient. Uh, through the pandemic, um, we've, we've taken the initiative to expand our distributor footprint because that was the way that we could engage with customers even though we couldn't train and have access to all of our customers. We're now supporting these various markets and moving from stocking orders into um, reorders and patient treatments. And at the end of the year, we expect in the US to move into having 10 to 15 commercial customers that are consistently generating revenue, along with 15 to 20 evaluations that are ongoing. Something similar, but slightly smaller in our direct European markets as those start to return to normal and we grow in Germany uh, and the Nordic countries. Uh, we'll add another handful of Iraflow distributors just based on market opportunities, particularly in key markets, larger ones that we have available. Uh, but we want to shift that focus more and more towards Iraflow reorders from these distribution partners, move from the small starter pack orders that they place initially into larger um, reorders to support commercial business. And then we'll also supplement that with a global network of hummingbird distribution partners as that CE mark timeline comes into focus. With these key, area focus, uh, key areas of focus in place, we feel increasingly confident with each passing day that we are taking the right steps to address and achieve the first key part of Iris's long-term strategy, which is proving commercial adoption uh, by accelerating sales. And with that, I'll hand it back over to you, Cleanthus, to discuss in more detail uh, the remaining items of that strategy. Thank you, Will. And as we said from the very beginning, ERAS is laser focused now in commercial execution. The reason is simple. We have de-risk the regulatory um, challenges that we faced a couple of years ago. We've now switched to a much bigger uh, regulatory notifying body in DECRA. Uh, we have expanded our regulatory footprint uh, around the world, and we continue to introduce innovation and new products. So the clinical, the regulatory, the manufacturing risks, all of these are now being minimized or significantly reduced. And the focus of the company now is to support the commercial strategy you just heard about. So in the remaining just couple of minutes, I just want to so you, a few things in terms of our um, constant innovative um, a focus on continuing to upgrade and update our products and introduce innovative solutions. So here is uh, the, the new 4.0 version of the software that has been introduced as we speak. We continue also to um, do this in multiple other aspects of our business, including our catheters. We're introducing now um, the 1.6 version of the catheter, which very smartly incorporates the best of the uh, 1.5 and the 2.0, those two previous catheter versions that are on the market. We're introducing that into something we call 1.6, uh, based on feedback from surgeons and, and nurses in making 
uh, <clears throat> a lot of these activities much um, faster and, and sooner. So in brief, what we have um, hopefully outlined for you is that we continue to generate um, a lot of background data, clinical data, regulatory uh, progress, manufacturing progress, innovation, <clears throat> expanding our intellectual property estate with the sole purpose of, of continuing to, uh, <clears throat> to focus on supporting the commercialization, uh, the commercialization efforts of the company, which we want to translate into significant revenue growth over uh, the next several quarters. And perhaps uh, we should stop there, Oscar. Um, I think it, it's very clear that um, our milestones, our commercial focus and our strategy is, is something we wanted to focus and open this up for uh, discussion and questions. Oscar. Thank you, Cleantis and uh, Will, for that presentation. Uh, it's very exciting to hear about all the uh, activities that you're doing and are planning to, to do uh, going forward. We have roughly 20 minutes of, uh, of Q&A, so I'll just uh, get started. Uh, first and foremost, uh, last year you uh, attracted the, uh, the Buffalo General Hospital in, in the US to evaluate uh, Iraflow. This is a very high-profile uh, stroke center, uh, and you're now saying that these uh, that this hospital is a commercial customer. How will this um, help your position uh, as an emerging company uh, for, for these types of treatments? Let me um, <clears throat> set the stage and turn it over to Will uh, to outline how the the team was able to do that. Um, Buffalo <clears throat> General Hospital um, has one of the most comprehensive neurocritical care centers, it's an educational institute, a lot of residents go through that, and it's clearly one of the top five prop of the world, both in terms of innovation and, and, and volumes. Um, <clears throat> what we are seeing here is not just uh, taking Buffalo and, and making that a commercial client, but the voice that um, the, the residents, the key leaders in, in the Buffalo University Hospital have across the neurocritical care societies around the world is extremely important for us to propagate our message. And that's what we're using. We're using those voices to further uh, propagate Iraflow's adoption. Will? That's absolutely correct, Cleanthus. Um, for us at this critical stage of growth, um, awareness uh, and um, that peer-to-peer -peer influence that I previously referenced are, are critical pieces. You walk into a new hospital in, in any country and they, they quickly say, who else is using this? For us to be able to reference a Buffalo General, uh, a Karolinska, a Helsinki University, uh, other key hospitals that are just starting to use the system, uh, that immediately adds a certain level of um, uh, of importance, a certain level of validation um, that, that opens the doors to any new technology. And as that web, if you will, grows, um, that impact will, will just continue to increase. Yeah, it's a, it, it's a very big step and uh, congratulations. Um, and if we look at these comprehensive stroke centers and uh, their product uh, ordering cycles, do they differ anything from the other stroke centers? Could uh, there, for example, be an a larger bulk order coming from uh, from Buffalo? Yeah, you typically see a slightly different uh, order cycle. The, the comprehensive stroke centers, often these larger university academic hospitals, um, generally will have a slightly more intense, more uh, uh, time intensive approval process. So it might take a little bit longer, uh, but because you're dealing with a larger hospital, uh, you typically will be dealing with um, a, a larger uh, volume of, um, of ordering. Um, for instance, you know, in, in Buffalo, I, I reference that we have, we have six Iraflow control units um, mm -hmm. in place there in Buffalo to support patient treatments. Um, and, and I need to check with my team early this morning here in California, but you know, a week and a half into uh, our launch there, uh, a couple weeks into our launch, uh, I think three or four of them are currently um, actively treating patients. Uh, so um, you, you may deal with a longer timeline up front, 
Uh, but um, the, the goal is to have it uh, translated into more disposable revenue, recurring disposable revenue moving forward. Mm. And um, I think there's a pretty interesting dynamic in the on the U.S. market in terms of these uh, centers, because uh, as you said, around the 150 centers are these comprehensive uh, and they stand for around 60 percent of the uh, of the uh, patient uh, numbers. Uh, and that's your your strategy also is to, to focus on these. Uh, but could you say something about how the mix is for IRAS currently, uh, targeting, targeting these comprehensive stroke centers, the primary centers, and, and so on? Yeah, without, without a doubt. Early on, uh, when you're introducing a new technology for the first time to customers, um, you, you'll very quickly uh, engage uh, anyone who shows interest. And oftentimes at these comprehensive stroke centers, at these teaching hospitals, um, you need experience, you need these reference points, you need clinical data. And through the first part of our launch, um, it was a little more difficult to engage them because we were putting those pieces in place. Now that we are starting to publish clinical data and being able to share uh, these types of experiences with leading institutes around the world, uh, our ability to engage uh, and interest comprehensive stroke centers uh, has also increased. Um, of our um, current evaluations, our upcoming evaluations and hospitals in our funnel. Uh, at this point, we're engaging 80 plus percent of them being comprehensive stroke centers. Okay. Uh, so I, I can tell you both West Virginia University and Buffalo, the two new US commercial customers during Q1, both comprehensive stroke centers. Um, we are training a new hospital um, this week um, in the Eastern part of the US, um, comprehensive stroke center. Uh, two new uh, hospitals will begin uh, training and potential patient treatments uh, the middle of April in California, both comprehensive stroke centers. Um, that, that's a key part of our area of focus, a key part of our strategy, and we'll continue um, doing just that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's clear and, that and our, Oscar, uh, the, the point is, it, it's not just the volume and the name associated with this. It's also that this is a truthfully influencers, right? These are the people who will go to the medical conferences and and talk about their experience and propagate the, the era flow. It, it is a, an incredibly valuable <clears throat> um, way of us uh, telling uh, through those comprehensive centers, the story of era flow and, and why adoption rates uh, should accelerate as we look forward. Yeah. And this leads me to my, my next question. Uh, in the presentation, you, um, you talked about uh, Hummingbird and that it, uh, it is expected to make up um, pretty large portions of your, of your sales. Uh, and now that you are in, so to say, uh, some of these comprehensive stroke centers, is the likelihood of also getting Hummingbird into these uh, in increased, for example, at, at Buffalo? It does. Every hospital is different. Um, the, the buying cycle for intracranial pressure monitoring is slightly different because we're not developing a new market there. We're entering into a, a more competitive space. Um, so you have to pick and choose your, um, your opportunities wisely. Um, but obviously, once you're in and once you have a presence in the ICU, you're constantly assessing how they treat patients and constantly looking for ways to sell the full line of products. Um, so uh, you don't want to dilute your focus. So when you're in the midst of training, you're in the midst of building a strong foundation with Airflow, um, you want to keep the focus there. Uh, but um, in, in all of our new Airflow orders, we're ensuring or trying our best to ensure that the, the cranial access kit uh, that, that came with Hummingbird is, is part of that um, evaluation. And um, we haven't gotten there yet at a place like Buffalo, uh, but there are numerous hospitals that are either using Iraflow commercially or evaluating Iraflow, where we also now have Hummingbird um, in the uh, in the queue for an evaluation. And um, I think I will come back to uh, to Hummingbird later on, but let's let's turn uh, our heads towards the the EU because I think that's a pretty interesting market, uh, especially considering that you were actually. Uh, active there before this whole CE uh, debacle. Um, so, how are things progressing in the in the EU and, and uh, more specifically in uh, in Germany, where you are constructing this uh, this own sales force? Yeah, uh, they're, they're progressing nicely. Um, the, obviously, we we would we would uh, we look forward to a, a time when um, 
things start to return to normal. Um, the, the customer availability in Germany at this point is, is slightly um, behind where we are in the United States due to vaccination availability uh, and a, a third or, or fourth wave of COVID. There are certain uh, regions of Germany where more stringent uh, restrictions remain in place. Um, our team is is being opportunistic. They're engaging customers where they can uh, engage and where we can still get into ICUs. Um, and, and that's a combination of hospitals that have previously used Iraflow, uh, but then also new customers um, that were interested but, but never had experience before. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we, we, we have a, a, a nice funnel of interest and we look forward to capitalizing upon that in coming months and quarters as um, normal activity uh, returns to um, you know, normal levels. Yeah. And, and, uh, and Oscar, to your point previously, we are we have filed for a C mark for Hummingbird in Europe. There's a qualitative difference where in Europe there's much more um, use of bolts as opposed to catheters for ICP monitoring, intracranial pressure monitoring, and so it's a, a, a three to four fold higher. <coughs> than the US. And upon receival of the C mark, which we expect this year, that opens up the possibility to accelerate not only Hummingbird, but by extension Iraflow adoption in the in the EU. Yeah. And um, in the EU, do you notice it being uh, easier to initiate this uh, evaluation process considering uh, you've been there before? Uh, I mean, more specifically on, on hospitals that you have been active on or is the process more or less uh, unaffected? Um, it, it's a similar process, um, but I would say um, in, in Europe, um, when the, the chief of the neurosurgery department uh, wants to move forward, I think the evaluations can uh, begin faster. And obviously there are hospitals in Germany that have experience with Iraflow, uh, but the system has changed. Uh, nurses have changed. Our software has um, been upgraded. Um, and it's been a period of time. So we treat each one of those hospitals um, like, like a new start. We go in, we resume training, we start from scratch, we set ourselves up for success. Uh, but you typically start patient treatments and start uh, evaluations uh, faster uh, within a market like Germany um, and then allow them to assess the results and, and then make the buying decision on the back end. I mean, it, it's, it seems that you are definitely in a very attractive position to, to increase your sales uh, uh, significantly, even in the, in, in the shorter term. Uh, and previously, you had uh, financial targets uh, communicated. Uh, is this something that you think you will uh, use as a tool uh, again, or are you less keen on using it, considering that you uh, took those back before? So, Oscar, between the, as you characterize it correctly, the debacle of the, of the C mark with GMED, which is one of the prime reasons that we moved, of course, to DECRA, a much more sophisticated regulatory <coughs> notifying body. Um, and of course, the COVID in the background um, and us being in the initial stages of our commercial launch, we think it's an unreasonable and unrealistic to provide um, any uh, longer term estimates for now. As things normalize, we get out of COVID, uh, our um, experience in both Europe and the US um, continues to accumulate, uh, then we'll of course consider that. Mm. And uh, I think you mentioned there uh, on a slide that you are also um, planning on initiating uh, clinical studies for other, uh, other indications, so to say. And uh, I have in the back of my mind um, an example uh, where you used uh, Iraflow for, for drug delivery. Uh, could you say something about the timeline of eventually uh, looking into this, uh, this matter uh, more closely? Um, it, yeah, that's a very important question. And, and <clears throat> Will, you, you might want to comment about both the R study and the other activities that are going on the clinical front. Absolutely. Um, you're, you're correct. Um, Oscar, one of the key things that we focus upon uh, is not just Iraflow as a, a drainage tool 
um, but also Airflow is a platform technology uh, that can serve for targeted drug delivery directly into the brain. So many of these therapeutic agents um, can't have a clinical impact in the brain because they struggle to cross the blood-brain barrier and make it from the bloodstream to therapeutic uh, levels of, of concentration in the brain. So being able to deliver them directly um, can have a meaningful clinical impact. Um, what you'll see from us in coming months and quarters um, is progress on, on multiple fronts in terms of drug delivery. Um, our clinicians um, are, are already using our system in conjunction with um, uh, therapeutics um, at this point, and you'll start to see the first couple of publications um, documenting that in literature. Um, Buffalo is actually working on a case where uh, they treated um, a, a, an intraventricular hemorrhage, a series of intraventricular hemorrhages in conjunction with um, uh, the thrombolytic agent TPA. Um, the ventriculitis case from Helsinki that we showed earlier, uh, that was uh, used in conjunction with antibiotics. Um, and we're taking that early case series, putting that in literature, and then building upon that um, with a, a series of, of clinical studies, the most important of which is partnering with uh, the team in Helsinki and um, the, the team from Johns Hopkins here in the US um, that published the CLEAR and MISTI trial series um, to start a, a, a clinical trial known as ARCH. And that will build upon the CLEAR um, series of clinical trials uh, that looked at traditional drainage and thrombolytic use uh, in the treatment of interventricular hemorrhage, and that will add Iraflow's active irrigation as a way to further disperse the drug and, and help to better remove the blood. Um, we'll, we'll be making uh, announcements on the initiation of that clinical trial uh, in coming months as um, protocols are, are approved and, and first patients are treated, uh, but we're making very good progress on that front, and, and we really feel that that piece will be something that's extremely transformational for us as a company. Yeah. yeah, I think it's very interesting with the uh, increased uh, uh, focus on the on clinical evidence uh, for sure. Um, but if you go back to um, uh, Hummingbird, as I said, you you entered a, a collaboration with the Premier, um, and how will this affect your uh, your outlooks uh, of increasing those sales as opposed to not having been in, uh, having this uh, collaboration? And is it uh, how are you working? towards getting Iraflow also included in, uh, in GPOs? Um, the, 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 the contract, the affiliation that we, we signed with Premier is obviously helpful. Uh, it, it provides pre-negotiated terms and pricing to an extremely large hospital network in the US uh, that will um, cause those hospitals to immediately move to the top of our um, sales target list. And we're starting to see uh, progress there as I previously referenced. Um, that helps us build a relationship with Premier. So as the drainage products uh, come up for um, uh, contract renewal, uh, that provides a clear path forward for Iroflow. Um, and there are a couple of other similar hospital networks in the US um, that really do a good job of driving contract compliance. Uh, and that's where we want to have Iroflow in particular on contract. And, and those conversations are ongoing. Um, we wanna be selective in terms of um, uh, hospital groups that we engage. We want those uh, engagements to be impactful uh, and, and we're targeting our efforts in those directions right now. And uh, I think it might be kind of difficult for you to answer this one, but um, in terms of, 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 of mix uh, between the Hummingbird and Airflow uh, in, in sales, how, how could that look like? A lot of this will depend on, on when we get a C mark in Europe, because the, as I mentioned before, um, Airflow and, and, and Hummingbird um, are very connected in terms of one supporting the other as we open the dialogues with, uh, with different clinics. In the EU, however, intracranial pressure monitoring happens with bolts a lot more often, as I mentioned, than the US. So getting that C mark, which we anticipate this year, will accelerate both the hummingbird, but also help the ear flow. And so once we, once we get the C mark, we'll have a much better understanding of the split that you're looking for uh, between sales of ear flow and hummingbird. Okay. And I think we have time for two more questions. Um, 
uh, w one thing that you mentioned in, in, in the Q4 report, I think, is that you have started uh, manufacturing airflow uh, internally and that this will have a positive impact on costs. Is, is, uh, are, are you looking into more uh, measures to, to decrease costs or was this more of an uh, isolated uh, decision? Um, Sorry, Oscar, well, if I understand I mean, what you said is, is um, if it's not an isolated decision, as, as I said, we, we, if you look at the three or four other parameters of our business, um, the engineering, the regulatory, the manufacturing and the clinical, it is a conscientious decision to take on uh, and control fully the quality and reduce the cost of goods further, so increasing, increasing our margins. So you'll see that being expanded as we are building uh, what we call the, <coughs> the ERAS manufacturing facility. Okay. And so the, uh, the final question for this, for this event, could you give three words that would be uh, best describing 2021 for ERAS? Well, I'll definitely the first word that comes to mind is uh, innovative. Will, what, what would you say the other two would be? Um, 2021 uh, in ERAS is, is customer focused, um, patient focused. Um, the, the impact that we show, the lives we save are profound on a daily basis. Um, and the, the, the year as a whole um, is, is going to be transformational in terms of revenue that we deliver to the marketplace, in terms of impact that we, we start to show in the neurocritical care space. Well done. So to, I, I'd say if, if we were to stay on the three words, I would say you know, innovative, disruptive, and commercial. Perfect. Well, okay then, Eros, thank you for your presentation and uh, joining me in my uh, Q&A session. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Appreciate the time.